Welcome to tutorial number two in our bullet game. In this game I'm going to show you how to fire a bullet across the screen. The term firing the bullet um, isn't, isn't exactly what it seems. It, all we're doing is automatically moving a character across the screen and then later on we're going to cause a collision. So all we're going to do is just like we in previous lessons where we've loaded um, a character on the screen and moved it left or moved it right. All, all we all we really doing is just basically placing the sprite on the screen and on when a key is pressed, we're just move automatically moving that um, that sprite across the screen. And then if, if it moves off the screen or if it collides, we reset and we reset in the sprite. So what the concept is just moving the sprite. So the first thing I've done is I've loaded the image. So load image and I've given it the variable number four. So I call it rock, it's JPEG, it's, it's just a large bullet. So I've loaded the image in and then as always I need, just like for the good guy, X pause and Y pause, I've said bullet is variable name number four and I've said the bullet X pause and the bullet Y pause. I've put them at zero because I don't want them to appear yet. These, these bullets will appear when I fire so they'll They'll be, they'll need to be, they don't need to be loaded into the game at this point. Uh, when we start the game, we need to start the good guy on the screen. When we fire a bullet, until the space bar is pressed and the bullet is loaded, we, do, we don't need to see it. And then, obviously, we need a variable for for, for fired. So you, you've either pressed the space bar, you have pressed the space bar. You've either fired or you haven't. So fired is zero. Um, we don't need to create the bullet sprite at this point, although we will need to do it later on and we don't need to set the sprite on the screen at this point because the bullet hasn't, we haven't pressed the space bar, fire hasn't gone to 1 so we don't want anything appearing on the screen. Um, I'll delete out the go cell for the time being. So the next thing we need to do is, is basically fire the bullet. So I've, I've created a subroutine and you can use this code time and time again once it's been made. So I'm calling this basically the load in the bullet if you like. This is what this is this is the first part of the of the subroutine to load the bullet so to get the bullet in state. So I'm saying that if so exactly the same as moving a character up and down, if the get raw key state is 32, which is the space bar, and fire the zero. So if I I'm saying I'm saying if 32, if the space if if this if the spacebar isn't pressed, then the state is zero. Just create the bullet. So that's all I'm doing. Just like we create the good guy, we create the bullet. But creating the bullet doesn't actually create sprite, doesn't actually put the sprite on the screen. Set sprite position is what puts the bullet on the screen. So what I'm saying is this if the space bar isn't pressed, the state is zero. Just just create the sprite, but don't do anything else. Then I'm saying, if if fire is one, so if the spacebar is pressed, put the bullet into the good guy. Now I've said the good guy variable. There's fired what we called earlier. The good guy is ten pixels in on the x coordinate. That's where he is. And so for for us, I'm saying that if it's zero, create the sprite. If it's one, actually put the Put the sprite at this coordinate. Put the sprite x x in. Uh, put the, put the sprite in uh, on on the good guy. So we've we put him in ten pixels in. So that's basically loaded the bullet. Um, obviously you need to pause the video perhaps and type this code in. But that's the the bullet loaded. We've now got to got to fire that bullet. And so what do we do? So if we now know if fired equals one, just like when we put a character on the screen, we say set the sprite position, bullet, bullet x position, bullet y position. I've called these here, bullet x, bullet y. And if you remember, set sprite position, good guy, good guy x, good guy y. It's no different. It's exactly the same. We set the sprite position and we bullet x equals bullet x plus 10. So that's all we need to do. So here we've loaded the code and we've put, put the bullet into the guy, we've loaded the gun and now we're basically firing it. So we're saying 
put the bullet on the screen and then move it across at 10 pixels per time. You notice I've deliberately put these variables wrong. So if I run this game now, that I'll need to, to put in the go sub, which is something I keep forgetting lately. So go sub, um, I think it's called, I forgot what we called it, fire bullet. So now I've, I've got that ready to run. If I run it, it'll, it'll crash immediately because I haven't put the X and Y position in, but I just wanted to show you the first part, which is I'm going to press the space bar and you see the bullets appeared, but it hasn't moved. But so what I've so what I've done there is I've loaded the bullet, and now I need to start moving that bullet across the screen. And so I can fix that sort of deliberate mistake if you like to pause the code. So I'm now going to put in X pause. There's no need for a Y pause. We're not moving the bullet down. We're just moving it across the screen. So if I compile this now. And the bullet's going to move across the screen. So let's, let's I'm going to press this. I'm going to press the space bar, and you see the bullet moves across the screen. But if I press the space bar again, nothing's happened. I fired the bullet, and the bullet's moved across the screen. It's gone off the screen, and now it's continuing into infinity. So that so we've got a problem. So I now need to create a, a new little command that says when the bullet gets 800 across, stop it, delete it, and reload again. So that's straightforward enough to do. Um, I'll make another subroutine for that, but you could just as easily put this underneath. So I've called this one check bullet, and I basically said the screen width is 800, so if the bullet reaches 800 it is off the screen and therefore delete it. So basically what I'm saying, if bullet X so if bullet, so if bullet X pause, what I'll do just, just to show it, I'll delete it at 500. So as it gets before it gets in, gets in if, it, if it's more than 500, set fired to zero and delete the sprite. That's all we need to do. And we've now created it, we've now reset the whole thing. So you could just as easily copy that into there, but I, I prefer to have a, a separate subroutine just to show you. So if the bullet X position is more than 500 across, fired equals zero, delete the sprite, and it'll just wait within the subroutine to run again. So I'll put in go sub, check the bullet. And now what you see is that I'm going to fire the bullet and let's have a look. We've got, it's 800 across, so probably when the bullet gets to where somewhere in this region, it'll, it'll stop and delete. And, it, and, it, and it's gone. And so, that, so what's happened, load, load the bullet, fire the bullet, set, delete the bullet, set, set fire to zero, and delete the bullet. And as you see, it goes. And, and that's basically the, the routine for firing the bullet. It's straightforward. It's a little bit of thought goes into it, a little bit tricky to, to program originally, but once, but once you get, get your head around it, it's not too bad. So I hope you found that tutorial on firing the bullet useful. As I say, you can use this code again and again now, and, we, and, and I hope I'll, to see you in the next lesson where we'll move a character down the screen, create a collision, and then, and then the game will start to take shape. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial.